Welcome everybody, my name is Guy and I am a welder. I'm also an educator at my local college. Hey, I'm Max Saron and I'm the director of the CWB Association. And we're here today to talk about hard facing. Okay, Max, I have a limited experience with hard facing. Can you tell me a little bit about what it is? Well, hard facing is when you want to put a harder material on something softer in order for it to last longer. So you're going to take generally something with nickel or chromium or some type of alloy that makes the steel harder and more durable and put it on a cheaper or softer steel like mild steel. Okay, so if I have a worn down plate, I can just take any nickel rod and just start laying down beads on a plate? Well, that wouldn't be the best way to do it, but you could try it. Now you want to think about how thick the plate is, how much you need, cost, these electrodes generally are more expensive, and the application of where it's going to go. So could you? Possibly, but you'd probably want to do a little bit of research first. Okay, good. So I did, I did do a little bit of research and it turns out you do have to put some form of, they call it a buttering layer underneath before we actually put our hard facing rod down. Why is that? So in order to butter, what you're trying to do is you're creating a middle layer in between a very hard material and a very soft material. The very hard material will stretch and contract differently than the material underneath. That can cause cracking or issues down the road or really bad distortion. By having a buttering layer, you create a transitional period where it also helps it weld better. All right, that makes sense because I had this go cart axle that I had to build up on it and I just grabbed my TIG welder, I started putting filler metal on it and next thing you know, big giant crack. It's very important with these different alloys to keep in mind how they stretch and contract because they can lead to different failures. Okay, Max, we got our plate up here right now. I'm looking at some filler rods. Um, I'm pretty used to seeing these mild steel electrodes, but I know that these are not the same. Can you tell me a little bit about what's inside that filler metal? So there's generally some components that you'll see in most hard surfacing materials or electrodes. Nickel, chromium, there's usually some more manganese in there to help with it transitioning into the weld. And all these different alloys, what you're trying to do is just create other type of material alloys combinations that will make the plate more durable and hard. Now keep in mind that when you weld with these type of electrodes there are going to be chemicals in the fumes, you're going to have to be extra safe with your PPE because there is a lot of fumes that come off hard facing electrodes and also in terms of preheat and post heat there might be some procedures involved. That's good, okay great yeah because I've got my respirator right here and we've got all our PPE. So we're, uh, we're going to do the SMAW process today but in your experience what are some of the other processes that we would use for hard facing? Well, the flux is really key to a hard surfacing electrode, so it's going to be mainly the flux processes. So you're going to have SMAW, you're going to have flux core, there's lots of hard surfacing electrodes, filler materials that are in the flux core world, and then sub arc. Good stuff. So I'm pretty excited to try this out because uh, I've actually never burned any of these rods, so let's get to it. It'll be fun. Okay, so now that I've got a little bit more information, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable and we're going to go ahead with this, uh, this hard facing procedure. Now it's always important to clean your material first. If there's any little gouges or any sort of nicks in that material, in that plate, you want to bring that back up to surface before you start doing any welding. So in this case here, we're going to take off the mill scale, we're going to clean off any rust, any grime, anything that is going to be uh, you know, detrimental to that weld before we put our buttering layer on. So as always, it's important to wear the proper PPE for the application. This respirator here is going to be handy because of all the chemicals and stuff like that. We want to protect ourselves properly. I've also got my welding shield and I've got my suitable welding gloves and safety glasses. Okay, so now that we've got our material all cleaned up, I'm gonna start scribing some lines and we're gonna kinda of keep this nice and straight. I've got an, about an eight inch area that I'm gonna weld on and I'm gonna start with our 11018 and that's gonna be our buttering layer. Now remember, we're about three quarters of an inch right now and this is regular mild steel, so we don't need any preheat.
All right, I've been working hard here. I've got my buttering layer done. I've got about 10 welds done on this, on this plate. Now, it's important to recognize that when we're doing this, we're essentially just doing some plate padding. And that's doing some overlay, but we're wrapping our beads from crown to crown to make sure that you know there's no low spots, there's no valleys. So that if this did have to go off to machining or to be processed further into a flat plate, um, we wouldn't have to take too much more down than, than that required amount. So if we look here at our plate, we've got a we've got our flat plate, and then we come in with our first our first bead, and then our second bead is just going to sort of overlap itself third and we just keep going like that so that we're left with a nice flat surface versus having a bunch of random beads thrown on where we have low spots. Now we're going to keep moving on here and we've got two types of hard facing rods and this one here is primarily a nickel alloy base and nickel is normally usually responsible for corrosion resistance or remains hard at elevated temperatures as well. My 332 electrode, we're gonna be welding anywhere between 70 and 90 amps. I'm probably gonna meet halfway maybe and probably about 85. Our 1 8 electrode, we're gonna go probably around 120, 125. Now it's important to keep a little bit of a longer arc length when welding with these, they seem to blend out and wash out a little bit better. Now I'm gonna start with the 1 8 electrode. I'm actually gonna weld in the opposite direction and go perpendicular to the, the welds I just put down. Now that's not required, but it's gonna help with sort of uh, filling up these little low spots and, and just making sure that it's nice and uniform. And again, we're doing the exact same thing. We're overlapping from center to center. Okay, now I've been working hard at this. I'm almost done. Let's recap a little bit of what we went through on this. So we've had our base metal, we've got our mild steel, we cleaned off the mill scale, we cleaned off any rust or anything like that. Remember, if your plate's a little bit thicker, usually about one inch, even if it's mild steel, we may have to put a little bit of preheat into that. In this case here, we didn't have to. I came in, I inspected to make sure that we had a nice flat surface. I came in and I did my buttering layer with the 11018, that was a low hydrogen electrode, and then I came in with our hard facing rod. When I skate my chipping hammer across the mild steel, it almost digs in and it's relatively soft. I can scratch that easily. Now when I go over to my hard facing rod, that is sliding across this. So that tells me right there that that physical property is much harder because I'm not digging in the same way. Super excited that I got to learn something here today. So as always, keep those lenses clean.